What's going on everyone? Jack here from Half Chrome. Now I've already done a bunch of videos on the Mavic Air 2. In fact, I just uh, released a video telling you about the top 10 things I really like about it. Today's a little bit different. Today I'm going to tell you about the top 10 things that I don't like about this drone. DJ, I didn't get this thing 100% correct and I'm going to tell you what I think they should be fixing. Now to all those haters out there that say that I'm hating on this drone, well, bring it. Uh, feel free to leave those comments down below. Tell me what, uh, what did I get wrong? What do you think are the things they need to fix about this drone? Anyway, I've got 10 of them. Here we go. First thing is the 48 megapixel photos. Now that is a really cool feature, but is it really 48 megapixels? Yeah, the quad bear filter is really cool and that's what allows it to do that. But when you really zoom in on those 48 megapixel photos, they're not all they're cracked up to be. In fact, they're probably inferior to the Mavic 2 Pro. At least in our testing, the Mavic 2 Pro came out ahead in terms of sharpness and things like that. 48 megapixels are not all they're cracked up to be. In fact, you have to be shooting and really good lighting for it to really come through. I'd probably stick to 12 megapixels in most situations when you're taking photos with the Mavic Air 2. Now the second thing I don't like about this is also related to the quad bear filter and it also allows you to do really awesome HDR videos. Now that's a good thing. What I don't like is the HDR videos are limited to 30 frames a second. Now it doesn't matter if you're in 1080, 2.7K or 4K, you're not getting any higher than 30 frames per second on the HDR videos. And that's really a shame. Slow-mo makes everything look cooler. And a higher frame rate means better slow-mo. Speaking of limitations in the videos, my third gripe with this is with the quick shots and the automated flight modes and video modes. You're limited to 1080p, 30 frames a second. Why can't I do a drone in 4K? <laughs> I don't know, right? You're just gonna have to fly those manually if you wanna get 4K, 2.7K, or something higher than 30 frames a second. The fourth thing I don't like about this drone is the lack of side obstacle avoidance. Now we have it in the front, we have it in the rear, we even have some sensors on the bottom, but we don't have them on the sides. Now I think the sides are really pretty darn important. Um, and without side obstacle avoidance, things like orbits, and if you're trying to do a parallel tracking of, of an object, that's where it gets really dangerous. And, you know, frankly, if I'm flying forward, I can see what I'm flying into. Uh, I would say that those front obstacle avoidance sensors need to be on the sides because that's generally where the problem areas are. I can see what's in front of me. The fifth gripe I have with the Mavic Air 2 is with Active Track. Now, Active Track by DJI has has never really been the best. Skydio is king, and they're still king. Now, Active Track is better on the Mavic Air 2 than it was on the Mavic 2 series, but really, is it? There are definitely some trade offs. I found the Active Track, when it's on this drone, it tends to stay a little bit further behind the subject, which gives it more time, so it should react better. Um, but I also found it's particularly poor uh, when you're trying to do a parallel follow. And maybe that has something to do with the lack of side obstacle avoidance. It actually doesn't really follow parallel, uh, but rather kind of on an angle off to the side a little bit. It's okay, but really the active track has a way to go. Why doesn't DJI buy Skydio and use some of that software? Get those engineers working for them. They could really conquer the drone world that way. I don't know. I even think Parrot does a better job of active track. You know, the active track modes between this and the Mavic 2, they're named differently. The icons look different. There's different menus. It's really kind of confusing if you ask me and not very intuitive. If they work better, maybe it'd be easier to remember. I, I don't know. DJI really needs to take a hard look at how they implement active track, both in software and in firmware. I think they could definitely use a shot in the arm when it comes to active track. The next issue I have is actually with the remote control. Now they definitely redesigned this remote and I like it in a lot of ways, but I also like to fly with an iPad mini and that isn't going to fit in this remote. And that's really kind of sad because I like the larger picture, uh, the larger screen on this when I'm flying. So I'm limited to my smartphone, which is okay, but this was so much better. 
There are third party applications that you can buy to get this to work together, but really they should have kind of figured that out. iPad mini at least, if not, you know, I know a lot of people like to fly with a full size iPad or a full size tablet. That was a poor decision on DJI's part. Number seven, uh, there's no real quick and easy way to turn off obstacle avoidance and A-pass. I want both of those things to be quick and easy to turn off with a flip of a switch. I would love it actually on the remote itself and it's not there and you gotta go through menus and that's kind of a pain when I'm flying. I wanna get into that tight space that I know that I can do, um, but obstacle avoidance is going off and it's beeping and it's not allowing me to fly the way that I wanna fly. I really wish it was easier. Maybe change the ability to add some of the function buttons really only having one function button on the remote is kind of a bummer so uh, i would really like to be able to turn off and on obstacle avoidance like that numero ocho the dji fly app now it was supposed to be designed for a beginner to use i do think that it is slightly less complicated than the dji go 4 but it's really not nearly as intuitive as it should be for beginners at least that's my opinion i also don't quite understand why i can't use the dji go 4 app with this as well i like the go 4 app better actually it gives me a little bit more freedom to do some different things and i find those menus actually to be a little bit more intuitive maybe because i've been flying that with that app longer but why can't i use either one of those apps that seems kind of like an odd thing beginners go with the fly app been flying for a while go ahead and use dji go for why not number nine this thing doesn't live up to the expectations the lofty expectations that dji sets for it. what am i talking about well the range right the range on this is supposed to be 10,000 meters. That's actually better than the Mavic 2 series where they state it's 8K. Now, I don't really ever plan to fly that far away, but on our testing, the Mavic 2 series actually outperformed this. This is supposed to be better, and it's not just our test where this didn't live up to the bill. Also, battery life is supposed to be 34 minutes. Now, I know you're never going to get all of that battery life, but realistically 28, maybe 30 minutes if you're really eking out the battery is the best you're gonna do. If you say 34 minutes and I'm only getting 28, that's a pretty big discrepancy if you ask me. I wish that they were a little bit closer to the actual capacity uh, that they're quoted, right? I know they're never gonna live up to those expectations, but they should be a little bit closer if you ask me. All right, number 10, the last thing, this is the Mavic Air 2, right? Air. If you remember the original Air, he came out with it in his pocket. I ain't putting this in my pocket. This, yes, it's foldable and it's small. Is this a travel drone? I don't know. I guess it's slightly smaller than the 2 Series. But the Mini is absolutely the way to go when you're thinking small. So, you know, I don't know. Mavic Air 2, it just doesn't seem like a Mavic Air 2. It's more like a Mavic 2 Lite, right? I even like the original design of the Mavic Air air better than this you know they went bigger they went bulkier they went you know with the standard Mavic look I get it they're trying to kind of create a branding and what these look like makes sense but air is a bad name for something this big and it's certainly nowhere near 250 grams now I get this isn't going to pack all of the things you need under 250 grams but you know you have to note that it is over 250 grams which means you're going to have to register this you don't have to do that with the Mavic Mini. Okay, so those are our top 10 gripes with the Mavic Air 2. What do you think? Did we miss something or do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, we've got a lot of stuff on our website from photography to FPV. We've got all sorts of drones. We got you covered at halfchrome.com. So make sure you check that out. Hey, if you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumb up down, right? I want to know what do you think about our videos on these Mavic Air drones. Hey, good luck and happy flying.